Welcome to the Wandcast. It's the chapter by chapter reread of the Harry Potter series with a wrestling themed brother craft throw on the side. I'm Aaron, and I'm here with my two favorite awful puffs, Jade and Nate. Hello. Hi. On this episode, brother. We are twisting our way into chapter 17 of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Cat, Rat, and Dog. You know, I thought it's funny that you didn't mention these 22-inch pythons, brother! Or however big they were. Uh, They were 24-inch pythons. 24-inch pythons. The python was in the last book. Ah, yeah. Well, (laughs) (laughs) we've we've moved on. I wonder if that's his favorite one. (laughs) You know, probably. I think so. I'd like to think it is. (laughs) As just a quick shout out, though, as we get close to the end of the book here, because we only have five more chapters counting this one. uh, We do have a few side projects that we've been working on, and we are very, very excited and very, uh, very much looking forward to sharing those with you all. A lot of those extra details are going to be on our Patreon. So if you want Patron. to keep, if you want yes. to keep up Come with our Patron and be with us, the, pat- <laughs> the Patron of our content that is going to be on our Patreon for some extra Harry Potter related fun, and that is patreoncom slash podcast att. And that is, uh, you know, I think it's time to get into it. And this chapter opens as the trio deals with loss, a rat, and a surprise attack. <laughs> After the willow stops whomping, we take a quick trip to the Shrieking Shack. Ron reveals that this is all just a trap. Lupin reveals his true colors, and Harry can't believe he has to put up with all of this crap. Uh, It just occurred to me that (laughs) if you are are going to continue to rhyme, (laughs) then I am going to songify something you say. (laughs) And make songs out of it for for our patrons, because I think that would be hilarious. Oh, no. Winning. Oh, no. <laughs> cool things that I don't have to try hard to make happen. No, you, you already did. It's done. <laughs> I did my part. <laughs> now we just have to give it to the internet and see what happens. Yeah, hey, if internet. you want to songify my chapter summaries, go ahead and then share those with us. And we will share them with everyone that we can. With everybody else, right. <laughs> All right. Well, I am ready to start doing some deep dive discussions. Are you on this chapter? I am. Are you sure? I think so. Okay. Are Are you? Yeah, I was just questioning you. Oh no. <laughs> well, no. Anyways, no, we're good. I'm super Keep confident going. now, and it's great, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have the final match between Crookshanks and Scabbers, and now this is where my wrestling brain. Can't help but work its way in here. (laughs) But the whole idea of this is that the final match that you get a definitive end to the story. So when we get all this bullshit of interference by the Grimm, which is not the Grimm because the Grimm is spectral. Right. This is a giant fucking dog that is attacking our main character. Yes. Actual no shit dog. Yeah. The Whomping Willow also comes in. Crookshanks doesn't get to finish his story. Okay. Never gets a clean finish. There's too much interference nowadays. I want good, clean storytelling. At this point in the book, right? <laughs> like, we, you haven't gotten to the end of this chapter yet. So mm. you don't know. Like, Scabbers is just an innocent little rat running away from the, <laughs> the cat, right? True. That is true. At this point in the, in the chapter, I don't know that this is the final match between Crookshanks and and the scabbers, but it felt like it. It felt like this was the final showdown between the no, two. No, I know that. What I'm saying is yeah. that we've been preaching <laughs> that scabbers has gotten the short end of the stick. Oh, yeah. For most of this. So it feels like you're rooting for the cat <laughs> at this point. And that seems weird. He switched sides. Um, <laughs> True. You know what? That's a good point. I have, I flip flopped. I've started rooting for the heel. I'm rooting for the bad guy now. <laughs> Well, I think it's because Crookshanks is like acting a fool. He's like biting Ron, which is not something that he normally does. Right. He's running. He's trying to get out of Ron's grasp. Like Ron Harry Hermione just heard Buckbeak get executed. 
Calm the fuck down, Scabbers. You're not being a good friend right now. That is what's interesting about it is that on the surface, Scabbers is safe. He's under yeah. a, a invisibility cloak. He's with Rod. Yeah. He's in a pocket. Yeah. Uh, Crookshank shouldn't have been able to even know he was there had he been quiet. But he good decided point. to freak out. Which, why is he freaking out? But if he's a rat who has been repeatedly attacked in his home... And his home is with Ron, and Ron is trying to take him back to his home. It it follows that he's like, "Fuck you, I'm getting out." Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and like you said, yeah, they were all three under the invisibility cloak, and as Scabbers ran away, Ron ditches the cloak, yeah. and then that causes Harry and Hermione to ditch the cloak, and that's for sure not going to have bad consequences later, right? And they're for sure not going to wish they had an invisibility cloak later. When you lose a pet, when a pet runs away, it's terrifying. Oh, oh, absolutely. You want to catch your pet. But there's like nuance here because we thought the pet was gone and dead. So he's sad. You want it back. We just got it back. But he also was just biting you. And where's the? there's no good solution to this. He doesn't have a cage. And now you're running across the the grounds. Yeah. Where a lot of people can see you. Yeah. Yeah. And in addition, it's not just Scabbers and Crookshanks. Giant fucking dog has entered the picture, okay? We know that it's not the Grim, because the Grim is spectral. Only the person who is going to die is supposed to be able yeah. to see the Grim. The Grim is now attacking people. I think maybe we set this up just a little bit weird. Uh, cats chasing rat, they head towards the tree. The Ron takes off uh, chasing it. Invisibility cloak comes off. Then dog enters the picture out of nowhere. That's the situation yeah. we're in yeah. right now. Now, yeah. they didn't necessarily go towards the tree yet. Right. Not Yeah. Yeah, but that's kind of where everything took off at. And oh, so yeah. it's like we're out behind Hagrid's hut cuz they had to leave uh from the execution. So yeah, yeah, they were right. working their way back into the grounds. And yeah, so now originally yes, just Scabbers leaves, Crookshanks comes in, Dog comes in, and then the dog doesn't even focus on Harry. The yeah. dog is very focused on Ron, which confused the fuck out of me. I know for a fact it confused me when I first read this as a kid. Yeah, because in your head you're yeah. like, well, he's not the main character. This doesn't make sense. Well, and the Grim is for Harry. Yeah, the Grim, you know, you know, like the our thing was this was the Grim. Very clearly it's not now. This is the Grimm's cousin, Tim, <laughs> who's got a thing for Ron, apparently. He's yeah. dragging him into the tree. It's fucking... It, okay, when he pulls him into the tree and it fucking breaks Ron's leg, Ugh. and it's like the, the audible snap you could hear, I was like, that is nasty. I do want to say, oh. wild also, that these children and these animals running and screaming and like... Loud, right? It should be loud. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, should have yeah. alerted. So, somebody should have been like, there are children. I heard, I swear to God I heard children screaming out in the grounds. I'm going to go check that out. <laughs> this And this is not midnight. The execution was sundown. Yeah. Right. So this, I mean, look, it's going to be later because this is summertime, but it's like maybe 9 p.m. There's still students up. Yeah, there's people around with for windows sure. open because it's a gorgeous summer night. That's kind of what I was thinking. Windows, yeah. Like, you're telling me nobody in the whole ass castle heard or saw anything out of those windows? Uh, hey, apparently not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everybody closed their window and went to sleep at exactly, <laughs> exactly 7.30 that hey, night. Yep. It if, was, you know, if just we a weird know thing. Anything about 11 to 17 to 18 year olds, it's that they follow rules all the time. Every time. Yes. yes. Oh, for Never sure. Never question it. Yep. <laughs> Put a pin in that because I have comments about that for a little while later regarding the invisibility cloak, which we're talking about right now, too. <laughs> yes. We, the dog has the grim dog, uh, if you will, because I don't know if it's a grim, but it's a very large black dog. It's a dog. It's a dog. It's a dog. No one, no one pets it. Let me pet that dog. No one pets the dog, and maybe that's why it attacked Ron. Yeah, breaks his leg as it drags it into the Whomping Willow. Yeah, that's what he's pissed about. That dog was like, I sat in the stands. <laughs> I sat in the stands. And no I'm one a, pet I'm me. I'm not a small dog. I was up there. 
there. Multiple people had to have seen me, and not one person <laughs> tried to pet me. You know who that Fuck one? All of you. You know who the one person that didn't pet him was? Ron. Ron. Ron, Ron was Ron up in the stands didn't for sure. Pet the dog. I'm getting real strong dogma <laughs> vibes right now. <laughs> Relax, Harry. You didn't do anything wrong. You noticed me. And then he turns to Ron, but you didn't pet me. And then he fucking just... <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it kind of does feel like that... Look... Based on what we know, I feel like that's a pretty strong theory heading into the next portion of this chapter. Well, and we do know the dog and the cat get along. Ron's oh, been yeah. a dick to the cat. Yeah. So maybe the dog is like, you didn't pet oh. me, and you were a dick to my friend. Yeah. So fuck your whole shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel, I'm starting to feel real bad for Ron. I love Ron. Oh. I always feel bad Well, for this Ron. is terrifying. <laughs> I mean... Right now, he's being mauled by a huge dog dragging him into a tree. He's yeah. got a broken leg. Whomping tree. Like, this is traumatic. Yeah, before the leg is broken, by because the dog bites his leg, right? And is dragging him by his ankle. Yeah, yeah. That is not a good... F- like, you're not... Uh, as, at 13? No, they, you're screaming. This yeah. is you the worst pain you've ever of, felt you in your entire life. Out. Somebody pulling you by teeth is... Yeah. The, Ow. And yeah. we know Ow. that Ron is the the biggest of the three. Yeah. Uh, you know, the tallest well, at the very least. And Jade and I know someone, I'm not going to mention their name, but who had been um, bitten by a dog when they were younger and has a mark on their face. And I went to school with this person, but I've I've heard them talking about dogs and how to this day they're terrified of dogs yeah. like they don't go anywhere near a dog oh yeah ever and even if it's safe and they know that they're like no i am going to avoid that because it's trauma that lasts a lifetime and so ron like i would not be surprised if ron never was near a dog after this ever again that is a fantastic point that at the very least Ron should have a little bit of trepidation around most dogs. For sure, this dog, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would probably. <laughs> That's going to be in his subconscious yeah. forever. Yeah. Well, and, and to add to that, they they go, so Harry and Hermione go into the tunnel. This Yeah, it's a tunnel underneath the Whomping Willow. That's right. a cat. The cat Secret access. entrance. The cat yeah. helped them. <laughs> so a little confusing. Out of fucking nowhere is like, yeah. boop. Here's the way. <laughs> yeah. What? This a is face what turn by cats Crookshanks. get up to. Yeah. yeah. They're just playing their own game. They're helping whoever they want, whenever yeah. they want. But He's they, like, you fucking humans, you stupid humans. Come over here. <laughs> I would like to posit that we know roughly how long this tunnel is. Because it's got to be, or at least to the Shrieking Shack. Harry, Harry knows that it leads into uh, Hogsmeade, and at the end of the tunnel... It's revealed that it is the Shrieking Shack. I have to imagine that this tunnel is roughly the same length as the tunnel from Hogwarts to the candy store that Harry uses. Honeydukes. Mm, They got to be about the same length. I have an argument for that. Oh, okay. Because the 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 tunny tunny to (laughs) Honeydukes. The tunnel to Honeydukes (laughs) is going from inside the castle. Yes. This is coming from the Whomping Willow, which isn't even just like right outside the castle. No, it's, it's yeah, a little bit farther out on the ground. The, the, yeah, out on the ground. Yeah. So I would think that it's shorter distance because it's like out farther, probably closer. Like if you walk the long way, the way you're supposed to walk to Hogsmeade, yeah. it's probably a long walk. This might even be a pretty short one because going as the crow flies... The answer is the Shrieking Shack is on the outskirts of Hogsmeade, but we don't know what side of Hogsmeade it is. So, I mean, you're right. It's close to the same length, right? We're not sure which one is longer because it could be on the opposite side of town. It could also be on the closer side of town. That's in my brain. And I think it's closer in my brain. I think the Whopping Willow is on the outskirts of Hogwarts. And the way that they're positioned is that you hog, pass it, hog, but it's farther yeah, out. Hogsmeade yeah, Hogsmeade yeah. is okay. maybe farther away, but the Shrieking Track is on the outskirts of Hogsmeade, which if you walk through the woods, okay. might actually not be that so far. So you would pass the, sh- the shack. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not pass it directly on yeah. the path, so the but tunnel, it would be in that direction. A tunnel underground between the two might only be a 10-minute, 20-minute walk. So I was going to say, we know the one from Hogwarts 
two Honeydukes is a roughly one hour, and that was Harry moving fast because yeah. it says it took. I think it says it took him an hour. No, it was going to. It took yeah, him an hour because the students so are you walked thinking to Hogsmeade. Thirty minutes to the Shrieking Shack. I'm thinking, yeah, twenty thirty minutes because I'm, okay, the way that towns work. Yeah, like I can I okay. can walk around and go to the street over there, and it'll take me. 15 minutes to walk around but if i go through, Cut back, through all the backyards <laughs> that it takes me five minutes and True. if you're doing okay. an underground tunnel boom you're right fucking there so the reason i was curious on this is because ron has a broken leg and he is being dragged roughly 30 minutes maybe 20 minutes on a broken leg drug on the ground harry and hermione are trying to like half sprint it says they're very winded this is an extreme, uh, not athletic, but an extremely physical thing that's happening and, right now. And maybe that's why, in my brain, it doesn't take that long. It's to gotta get there be closer. Because, yeah. Because Siri, or, sorry, the the dog <laughs> that is dragging Ron, the shaggy dog, you were about to say, yeah, <laughs> it can only move so quick, dragging yeah. a whole last body. Yeah. So Hermione and Ron should be able to catch up to them prior to them getting up all the way into the shack unless it is a shorter distance oh e- oh yeah, yeah i see yeah okay yeah and, th- and even just for <laughs> ron being drug on a broken leg yeah. yeah oh yeah ron should be passed the fuck out from pain when we get to uh, where we're going except he's a badass yeah ron is so. a badass and we do get into that more and oh i love it when they get to the the end of the tunnel harry kicks the door open fucking Badass. I would argue that's the f- stupidest fucking thing he could have done. Right, and it's badass. <laughs> so well, he's a Gryffindor. Okay. I don't understand. It makes sense. Yeah. I don't- <laughs> yeah. You don't know where they don't know where they're at yet, and he just busts this door open. Like, dude, we're you- here. Yeah, you okay. have a yeah. wand. Okay, listen. I hear where you're coming from, but yeah. I, I, and I'm not going to try to pull back to the 13 year old even so much. Here's the thing: a dog. Just grabbed my friend and took him. I don't True. think that the True. dog yeah. is dragging my friend back to a hideout of like bad people because dogs don't act that way. Dogs don't True. think like people. True. That is a wild dog dragging my friend back to a fucking cave or something. What it is is that the, <laughs> the invisibility cloak is off now, right? So yeah. the plan has been exposed. A- at this point, shit is hitting the fan. So he's like, fuck it. All bets are <laughs> yeah. off. Here we go. Now... The fact that the door is closed should say something. Because dogs... Yeah, dogs can't close doors. <laughs> dogs Not don't well. close... They, yeah, they don't typically <laughs> close doors. <laughs> they didn't include it in the book, but there was a little rope hanging on the handle, and he just very gingerly pulled it closed hey, behind him. I would argue that we're going to pin that because... I think you could argue that there is. There's a possibility. I think you could argue that there is. <laughs> He's a very good boy. I'm starting to see that, yes, it is It is a little bit more of like, nah, it makes sense. They're just doing it. Because they also, they hear run, or they hear creaks from upstairs. And so they run upstairs, and they find out that this is, in fact, been a trap. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to find out wow. what kind of trap it is after we take a quick little break because when i fall into a trap i always wish i had beer so we're gonna grab some beer we're gonna take a break well if you're gonna be in a trap you might as well have a beer yeah you've got time to kill yeah and we'll be back right after this i have one question what are we drinking today we are drinking creme Brulee from Coonhen Brewing Company. Okay, announcer Nate. Yeah, if you Thank so. you very much. I no, I'm excited to try this one because see Nate. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of creme brulee in general. So. Oh, are you one of those few people in the world who likes you, creme brulee? You might not know it, Aaron. You say Nate with his beach body and his, <laughs> his diamond chiseled abs and his long hair. He's not a dessert guy, but I'll have you know, I'm a pretty big dessert guy. <laughs> Nate so. has no idea what sugar oh. tastes like. Yeah. Never once had it. Never had a single carb. Yeah. I literally have to wrap myself in soft packaging materials <laughs> so I don't cut everything that I accidentally bump into with my rock hard ass. 
I hate you. I'm fucking lying to everyone Dude, and they know I, it. Uh, okay, but we are having <laughs> creme brulee from Kunen Brewing Company. Beers with distinct personalities, which Ooh, I really oh. like. Uh, this yeah. imperial stout with aromas of vanilla, caramel, and coffee. Yeah, catch that well. nose. Take a uh, nose. This stout has earned medals and People's Choice Awards at many festivals <laughs> made using the best freshly roasted coffee. I can see where that would help. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I also found this little blurb on the other side of the can. Oh. That says malt beverage made with coffee, natural flavors, artificial colors, and FD&C yellow number five. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I would like to clarify, not a yellow beer. Brewed in Detroit. Yeah, that's why I'm confused. This is a black beer. There's yeah. no yellow in it whatsoever. Maybe it was a weird color color before they added the yellow number five. <laughs> Could oh, be. Yeah. How far off of Mambo number Ooh. five is yellow number five? Okay, that's a bad question. <laughs> it's just a, a little bit of... See, that's why I said take, it, take a nose. A little in my life. A little, a little bit of caramel. Life. I could definitely smell the coffee. By my side. Okay, I'm ready for this. Let's cheers. A little bit of coffee blend is what I need. Oh, that's fantastic. That's coffee. That really tastes Ooh. like coffee. That is co- Holy that's shit. Coffee, that's coffee. That's coffee. Ooh. That's like a cold brew. Yeah, a caramel cold brew. Mm, that's good. I don't I don't think I'm getting any vanilla, but that is a delicious caramel oh, cold that's brew that's going to get me drunk. The fun, <laughs> the fun thing about car uh, about vanilla is it can just ride in the back seat. It's true. And just level yeah. things out a little that's bit. Why I love vanilla. It just keeps you like you know when you're fr- you and your friends, it's a late night, things are getting a little wild. Vanilla sitting in the back seat going, "Hey guys, yeah, take it a little easy. We don't want the cops to, to, yeah. to catch wind of what we're doing. So just like hey, good old vanilla. Oh, what? Yeah, good old vanilla. Hold on, what? Just holding things we down don't in want the back the cops? seat. I thought we were at a fun bonfire and just didn't want our parents to tell no, us it's time seat. to go home. We're in the back seat. Kids are getting a little wild. You know, you and your friends are. You're. It's late night. What's happening? We had different upbringings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nate, we definitely did. did you, I think you said this and I already forgot, but you, you, this is a 8.5%? 8.5%. Yeah. I So this is a little bit heavier. That being said, I think I want to try to rate this out of 10 Burnt sugars? Caramelized 10 caramelized sugars. sugars. Yeah. Mm, salted caramel. Look. I think I'm giving this. I think I'm giving this a nine point five. Nine point five. I am right there. It's 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 similar to a beer we've either had recently or will have soon. <laughs> <laughs> to me, oh, wow. this beer is like a beer. <laughs> Gene, what, what makes this beer so unique? <laughs> Jade, what what makes this beer unique to me is as you swirl it, it has the 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 texture and kind of the the viscous nature of of liquid such as beer. And when you when you smell it, you'll notice that it has that kind of beery taste. Uh, much like any other beer you've ever smelled, <laughs> Nate. Nate. And, and Nate. Upon like, taking on, a one sip, question, other beers I've had are will have You'll notice it tastes a lot like other beers you've already had, and and possibly like a lot of beers you'll have in the future too. It's really just kind of a beery beer with kind of a beer forward profile and a beer finish. Beer. The beer's so good you can drink it with your mouth. Beer. I'm done now. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not. I'm... <laughs> this is going to be in the middle of someone's episode. Uh, uh, uh. To me, uh. a perfect beer is a beer <laughs> <laughs> that you can drink all day, any day. And in my mm, humble opinion, right. I think it's this beer is something I would like to drink. All winter long and all morning long, but not all day. But if it starts, <laughs> so getting, that's the point five. If it starts getting hot and humid, yeah, I don't want this. I agree. I don't I'm, want this. I'm in a nine range for this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm also in a. Nine. Wait, did I'm you also, give your rating already? I'm also in a no. Nine. <laughs> I'm what also did you in rate this beer? It's not that heavy. You can drink a lot of it. It just. It's, <laughs> 
uh, apparently the the caffeine is kicking in too. I don't oh know if there's God. any in this, but wow, <laughs> there is if you think there is strong enough placebo. Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> placebo well, yeah, can let's work. Get back to the yeah. episode. Okay, <laughs> and we're back. It is in fact a trap. Harry and Hermione walk into the room. They see Crookshanks on a bed. Ron is on the floor. Sirius Black was hiding behind the door. They shut it on them. They are trapped. I think it's fucking hilarious that Sirius Black, the feared serial killer of the entire book, is just like hiding behind the door. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what happened. Look, it is a terrifying reveal to walk into a room, scan around, turn around, and then then see another person in there with you. Mm-hmm. It's shocking. But as far as like big bad guy reveal it's like meh. <laughs> he was behind the door when it's it's a double <laughs> reveal because not only is Sirius Black in the room but Sirius Black was also the dog because he's an animagus Sirius Black then immediately tells Harry good job not getting a teacher and I think that that would be a defining moment for me moving forward I think I would always get a teacher oh well, that was okay. We did skip over that earlier. Right before they went into the Whomping Willow, Hermione's like, yo, yes, we need to get yes, help. Okay. Good point. This is a problem. Yeah. Harry's like, no, no that, dog, that dog's going to eat Ron. <laughs> we got to go. Which uh, he's going to get mauled for sure, but yeah. he's not going to get eaten. Okay. And, and we have since during the break, Little peek behind her curtain, looked up a lot of maps yeah. of Hogwarts. Oh, and yeah, in yeah, my yeah. brain, the Whomping Willow was in a much different place. It was farther from the castle, more in the woods. And every image I've looked at, it's like smack dab in the middle of the grounds, right real close to the castle. <laughs> Start yelling, run towards the oh, castle, yeah, yeah. be like, Filch! Anyone, a ghost. Peeves. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, Somebody hey, uh, hey, come peeves. out here. I give you permission to go get people and get them out of bed. Yeah. Hey, ministry <laughs> people, get the fuck over here. We got a problem. So, yeah, it's... If Care you... of magical... The, the dude who just asked, <laughs> Those are care of magical creatures, people. Over by Hagrid's... They, there's, this is a big-ass dog. We got a... That's true. We they got were a creature from, problem. They were from the committee. Yeah, they were. They're. Just, they're supposed to be the people that deal with dangerous creatures. Come yeah. execute this goddamn dog. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love well, dogs. Don't kill a dog. You guys have a Hogwarts layout that you have taken as canon, or one that you think is canon. Send that to us. I'd be curious to see because yeah, we did a quick look, and there's a lot. So if there's one that you guys like specifically, send that to us. Maybe maybe we'll post all the different Hogwarts maps that we get. I I know that fantasy mapping is like a, oh, it's yeah. got a big following. People do it as hobby. Well, and we it's, do it's have pretty fucking cool the movies, which we know the layout changed. I know Hogwarts Legacy oh, yeah. has a full map, so it's like there is I think technically canon versions, but they're all different. So let us know what you like. Yeah, and just to underline this point, I think that they've been repeatedly told. Not to leave the castle, not to wander around the grounds after dark. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, because there's a serial killer. Well, even before the serial <laughs> killer, you know, it's dangerous. Yeah. And uh, point being, you could get attacked by a wild dog. Mm-hmm. Listen to the teachers. Now, I do like that Ryder Diron has been a highlight lately, and he stands up. Uh, I don't think literally. I think he tries to stand up, but again, broken leg. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Ron would have fucking tried. If anybody oh. would in his condition, it would have been him. I'm pretty sure he tried to stand up because Harry moved to attack Sirius first and Ron and Hermione hold him back. But then Ron goes, uh uh-uh. uh, if you want Harry, you got to go through me. Yeah, broken, fucked up foot and all. He's just like, I don't care if I'm not much of a threat. I'm not going to let you just go go to him like i'm gonna do something what i did find interesting though is even after ron stands up to black black tells him to lie down you'll hurt your leg more this is a major tell psychologically something it feels like this is important uh people who are labeled serial killers a lot of times have a very you know their mo the thing that they do the thing the scenario that they're playing out in their head while they do Mm -hmm. the terrible shit that they do 
And even people who do things like that have barriers that they won't cross. Yeah, that's true. And those are very indicative as to what their whole fucking deal is. So we believe he's a serial killer. We're paying attention to his psyche. Blew a street up. Killed a bunch of people all at once. Killed a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Apparently did not feel guilty about that. Laughed. Been in Azkaban yep. a long time. The Dementors never really fucking affected him. Now he's out here, has had the chance to kill several people. Mm-hmm. Hasn't hurt anybody yet. Yeah, the dog's been everywhere this year. <laughs> the dog's year. been fucking yeah. nuts. Nobody's been... There have been no dog attacks, no. right? So that... It was and, in the Quidditch pitch. Yeah. Right. And so... Stadium. You know, this is the first interaction Same we thing. have with the dog. Surprise, the dog is serious. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't want to hurt Ron any worse than already has. Well, and, and he's not out for blood right yeah. now, or at least doesn't want to hurt our people. So what that means is that we may have been misconstruing his goals. Black even says there only be one murder tonight. And Harry flips out. Ah, so he is still a murderer. Great. Well, ah, yeah. Yeah. And Harry <laughs> flips out because like he says like, oh, oh, have you gone soft in Azkaban because you had no problem murdering all those people in the, Peter Pettigrew all those years ago? The problem is serious i mean he's been in prison for a long time might yeah. not be able to communicate clearly 12 years but he's not doing himself any goddamn favors no. no by being all like subtle and elusive and not being like hey i got a problem with the rat yeah the rat yeah. is a rat fuck and yeah. I'm, ne- I- I'm here to murder your rat. Yeah, when Harry is like, you killed my parents. And he's like, well, yeah, I don't deny. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, that's that's not what you say in this moment, guy. Also, I understand. Again, social recluse for the last little bit. This is the child of, of one of your best friends. Yeah. You, you know that this was like this whole thing has been a thing for this kid specifically. I get that you're focused on the rat. Okay, my guy? Mm-hmm. But the way through the rat is the people holding the rat. And yeah. one of those people has some trauma related. So, like, I I understand that he's not, like, emotionally yeah. aware. Yeah. But there has to be some amount of an adult that goes, oh, hey, man, I hear that this might be I, this might be weird for yeah. you. OK, I think the problem is this is not written the way that people actually talk right. to each other. In well, all no this way situation, that you would approach the it. conversation would be a lot different. Yeah. Well, I do think that, like, Harry's perspective, I get being emotional. Because, like, yeah, he is screaming, you killed my mom and dad. Right. And we get, like, I wish we got more of this in the books, especially with Harry and Hermione's background of being muggle-raised. Common fucking sense. Harry bum-rushes the dude who's been in prison for 12 years, has not been eating a good diet. There's no way this man is hitting his macros been for 12 out. years and then all this time being spent as a dog. And he does overpower Sirius almost all the way, physically. Harry doesn't get... I mean, they play Quidditch, but that's not really an exercise type sport. So yeah, I don't not, really, you know... He's not gaining I don't know definition. how that matchup goes, really. Well, he has, though, been defending himself uh, against his bully, bigger, older brother for his whole life, though. So. That's true. So as far Dudley, as muggle, yeah, running, Texas, we know he's got good cardio. You know what? Harry has been taking these anti-dementor classes and just kind of working on fear in general and how to combat that. So maybe in this type of a situation when normally Harry would be quite rattled, he is now more prepared for some sort of conflict. And so he's like ready to go. So when he finally charges him, like this, this is his moment in the sun. (laughs) He's finally confronting his parents killer head on. But then the killer continues to start strangling the child. during Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. This back and forth doesn't yeah. think to be like, yo, man, I don't want to hurt you yeah. <laughs> at any point. Yeah. Does he not be like, hey, I've done some shit in my past, but you're not my target. Mm-hmm. Neither are either of your friends. He's just like, I'm going to strangle you. And yeah, uh, like for him to be like, OK, I've tried to get this rat a couple different ways. I've tried to sneak in. I've tried to do other things that we get into. I can't. I'm going to attack children and then not explain myself and just keep trying to get the rat. Yeah. <laughs> it's just He has time to say things because he says things. He just says all the wrong things. Yeah. And so, yeah, this Sirius gets Harry by the throat. 
Harry is eventually able to break away and gets his hand on a wand. And so as we have Harry pointing his wand at Sirius, that is, again, when the line you brought up, he says, you killed my parents. And then Sirius just goes, don't deny it. Yeah. I don't deny it. Not the fucking thing you to say, guy. have your wand pointed at me, I am not going to deny that I killed your parents. No, you immediately this is not say, smart. no, 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 no. Let me explain to you what happened. <laughs> I felt that way for the last 12 years myself. But yeah. the person who is responsible is in this room. Yeah. yeah. I can bring you to the guy who is responsible. Yeah. yeah. I just found this out. That's why I'm doing this. Th- that's why you've been hearing my name on the news. That's mm-hmm. why I've been trying to like get a hold of you. That's why I've been, I was standing creepily over your buddy Ron's bed. It wasn't like that. I had just <laughs> figured out that he had yeah. fucking your rat. Yeah. Scabbers. Hey, is the guy just start saying Peter Pettigrew is alive. And then just like, see if Harry, if that registers, because if it does, you know, you have wiggle room to start explaining yeah. things. Yeah. Now, you know, everybody is up to alive. speed now. Yeah. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Just yeah. start yelling at Peter. Be like, Look at the rat. Yeah. Look at the rat. That, now, effectively, that's the main issue. Stop calling it your friend's rat. Stop <laughs> yeah. fucking calling it scabbers. Be like, I'm here for Peter. And you'd be like, this is scabbers. No, that is Peter, let me explain. Yeah. And now yeah. you have everyone's attention. Ron cares because it's his pet. Yeah. Harry cares because you're a killer and actually you're not here for him and may be able to help his situation. Like everything gets better if Sirius just spits it out. But I do want to make one point. It does say in the very beginning when you see him that it sounds like he hasn't had a lot of practice speaking. So we yeah. can we can attribute this to him being alone for a long time. And not having our common sense, like, no, this is how you would get there in a conversation. So I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, but it is really causing a problem. Well, and he is also in a very emotional place. He's been in prison for 12 years, has had two failed attempts at trying to do the thing he's been accused of doing, finally gets into a scenario where, like, it's right there. And then his best friend's son is trying to stop him. Sirius is also in a very emotional place right now. Yeah. But I think it was if he had not spent 12 years in prison before this, we probably would not have needed a spoiler alert third party to come in and explain things because the the kids do listen to explanation. Here's the issue, I think, with all of this. Sirius went to prison. We know he was arrested on site after this happened. Peter Pettigrew disappeared. So it was assumed Sirius murdered 12 muggles and Peter Pettigrew after yes. giving up the the, the, the potters. potters. Yep. So he's laughing as he's arrested. Okay. In that moment, Sirius goes, this motherfucker got me. And maybe he thought he killed Peter in that moment. So maybe he didn't say anything. But why would he not be like, I went and murdered my best friend's killer? Like... He didn't say shit. They didn't, they didn't, like, there was no cross examination. What is yeah. the justice system like here? Yeah. Where in, were the stories in the media? In the prosecution I, of Sirius <laughs> Black, how yes. did that trial, was there no trial? Yes. Did he just go to Azkaban? Because they're like, well, he was laughing at the murder scene. So we're just, he's guilty. And he didn't say shit. Yeah. Hey, he didn't ask look, for a, you know, a true serum. Are you kidding me? In addition to all this confusion, Crookshanks jumps up. And gets in between Harry's wand tip and Sirius Black. The really sad thing is that uh, <laughs> in my brain, obviously, Crook Shanks oh. is fucking smart and there's some shit going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But 100% thought Crook Shanks was a person. Like, just going to straight up say, and then Crook Shanks transformed. It's like every animal yeah. is actually just yeah. a person. I also uh, thought that. I the wish- forest is a terrifying place to be now. <laughs> I wish we had a side plot from Crook Shanks' point of view. Mm. It would be a beautiful oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Send uh, us your fan fiction if you wrote about anything from Crook Shanks' point of view. There is, a, like, ser- seriously, there's got to be a cat community because McGonagall fucking transforms. She oh, goes, yeah. hangs out with them for sure. There's a whole thing. They can make a TV show called what we do in the biscuits. Yeah. Oh my God. <gasps> oh my God. Anyways. Okay. Uh, okay. So <laughs> Okay, Nate. <laughs> okay. The, the saddest part about that scene is mm-hmm. Hermione in the background. Hermione doesn't run up to grab Crookshanks. No, no. Because I think she knows that Crookshanks has made his own decisions. Mm hmm. And he's going to protect this other person. Crookshanks has also been 
historically wrong uh, in everyone's eyes throughout this book. So she knows that she has no right to defend mm. her shanks. Oh, so yeah. She's just sobbing in the background because yeah. she knows her cat is probably about to get murdered because of this guy. I think there's something to that, that she is the one who, when she hears noises downst- downstairs, she yells. And we're going to find out who made those noises right after we take a quick little break. And I think we'll take that one maybe right now. I need a drink for sure. <laughs> And we're back, <laughs> and we are joined by the, uh, well, I guess technically he's the fourth party, because Crookshank seems to be playing both sides, and then it's the trio and Sirius. That fucking cat. Lupin yeah. shows up. He was the one making noise downstairs, and he comes into the room and disarms Harry. Yeah. Which Surprise! I get Like, I do believe that uh, taking control of a scene is an important thing to do in, like, crisis scenarios. Yeah, when he enters the room, Sirius is, like, half defeated. Harry's got his wand pointed at him. You killed my parents. Like, he's about... the. It it looks like a death blow. And I can kind of understand from Lupin's point of view as a teacher, right? We're not even getting into what we all know is about to happen. Yeah. Um, As a teacher... No, I'm not going to let a student of Hogwarts murder somebody. (laughs) Uh, If it is a serial killer, this is a very serious situation. Lupin definitely has to act, and he is in a real tough spot because now he's got to apprehend this serial killer guy or at least make sure that a student doesn't murder somebody and then assess the situation from there. Call the police or, you know, magical whoever needs to come take care of this guy Mm -hmm. and do it quick. So I can understand the disarming. Like, it makes sense. The confusing part about this scene is that Lupin comes in and is acting based on information that we are not fully processing that he has until the fully end of the chapter. Oh, yeah. So all of his actions seem wildly out of place. And they honestly kind of still are once we know the information. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, he should come in. He should control the situation. And honestly, somebody should shut the fucking kids up. I th- somebody ha- <laughs> there's magic here. Everyone should get a silencio fucking spell <laughs> put on them. Like, hey, we are gonna hold the talking stick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're going around the circle. We need to have a little powwow. Calm. Everyone needs to take a deep I breath. Nobody's doing anything until we figure this shit out. Love Only the idea of a magical <laughs> stick that forces everyone in the room to figure out a situation by making everyone shut the fuck Anyone up. Anyone who's not holding everyone the stick. Everyone speaking a lion. <laughs> so it's like we are going to get through the process of information the quickest, mo- hey, most efficient way. Only people holding the stick can talk. And I'm not giving you the stick. Right. So shut the fuck up. I mean, now, yeah, I there's mean, yeah, there needs to be some order and, yes. and shit here, and everyone's jumping to conclusions. Oh and yeah, nobody's being fucking clear well, with their uh, intentions. Yeah, because this confused. Yeah, Lupin comes in and immediately talks to Sirius and says, "Where is he?" Points to Ron, and yeah, Harry has no clue what's going on. And I would argue that baby, if I was in Harry's shoes. And I find out that I have a professor that was friends with my parents or knew my parents or knew my dad. I would have spent a lot of my extra time with him on top of anti-dementor lessons. We've talked about this. Yeah. Where maybe. Yeah. You know all of what's happening right now because it came out over the span of a year of you spending time with one of your dad's friends. So, yes, there's a lot of confusion. There were but a lot of opportunities. It, this could have been avoided. Yeah, for this to come up for sure, and it just hadn't. Any of those times, like over the over the break, when he's just hanging out with Lupin, yeah, the the subject was broached. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they yeah. were on the the well, I, like. I don't get why they didn't. They should have. And yeah, this it, it wouldn't be as much of a shock when he sees Lupin, this trusted professor that he spent no time with. Or very little time with outside of class, hugs Sirius Black, yeah, a serial killer who killed his parents, someone that Lupin said he was friends with or knew or whatever. Like there was an established relationship between them. I was just also gonna say that on the teacher's side of it, though, 
Mm -hmm. There is an established public story about what happened. Yes. You know what these gullible, impressionable students believe Mm -hmm. happened. So you know why they're being fucking irrational and crazy in this moment. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of your responsibility to be like, hey, I see how this looks. You didn't get all the information, but listen, this motherfucker here, he ain't trying to kill you. That f- There's a rat in the room. <laughs> we need to focus on the rat. <laughs> well, and, and Hermione even, you know, really drives home the confusion because she calls out that Lupin is, in fact, a werewolf, and he doesn't deny it because he is, in fact, a werewolf. Yeah. So this is not adding to... And we see Ron immediately reacts negatively to that. I, so we, we can kind of take from this that if you grew up in the wizarding world werewolves have a stigma about them and they're not good because Ron immediately doesn't call him professor, doesn't call him Lupin, just starts calling him werewolf and says, get back. I will say it was absolutely, this is why they should have been fucking silent because the way that Hermione oh, yeah. starts firing shit off is absolutely wild. <laughs> she yeah. is just like, oh, you're obviously a bad guy, you dirty fucking werewolf. I kept your <laughs> secret and uh, you liked this guy the whole time. Yeah. Like, the way you, You're a logic person. Think about it, bitch. The way <laughs> that she said he's going to kill you, he's a werewolf yeah. implies that yeah. only because he's a werewolf does he want to attack Harry. But yeah. That also yeah. means in some weird twisted version of Hermione logic that he is not going to then attack and kill them (laughs) because Harry's the main character and he's like, Oh, he's going to kill you. He's a werewolf. And then be like, all right, well this is done here. And then leave like, no, if he's a werewolf and he's going to do the berserker thing, you're all in danger. I think it's that the werewolf, they don't think a werewolf can control its actions. So like it could attack at any minute. You need to get away from the werewolf. But he's not wolfy right now. I, they, they don't, Hey, you can't understand the mind of a werewolf. I think we the will, reason yeah. this feels icky is because Hermione knew this the whole time, right? She was chill with it. The second she has another problem with this, per- this person as a person she oh, starts, she spills everything. She starts attacking him based yeah. on a different issue that True. she was fine with earlier. And yeah. all of a sudden now he's a terrible, dirty person because of that other thing. Because now you disagree with it. That's a good point. That's why it feels gross. Because she's like, oh, I'm going to expose you for this thing that you didn't think was exposable two hours ago. Yeah. You were fine with it. Everyone was safe with me. And now I'm a dangerous person because... Something else bothers you? Well, Mm -hmm. and that's why he turns around and goes, yeah, I am a fucking werewolf. What's the big deal? Right. Yes, because he he immediately goes, you know, because Hermione's like, I should have told. And Hermione or Lupin just goes, they already know. Yeah. Like every all the teachers know I'm a werewolf. So you have no ammo here, kid. I think it's a really interesting point. I just want to say her saying that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of the teachers that we've heard about, I mean, this year. Uh, Hagrid including, right? He's got a history. He got into some trouble. Mm -hmm. Dumbledore made him a teacher. Now we got Lupin. He's Mm -hmm. a werewolf. Uh, We're going to get more into that in the next chapter or two. But like like we just said, (laughs) that comes with a certain stigma. And yet, he's a teacher at Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. Dumbledore has... There's a theme here in the book that the people that Dumbledore choose to work with. Oh, yes. He's giving them second chances. And I yeah. think that's really cool. That is true. Now, and I think that's the thing, too, of of wizarding canon is written, unfortunately, by, like, the Ministry and the Daily Prophet. So it's right. most people grow up thinking werewolves are bad. I think Hermione did kind of take a more somewhat educated approach by not revealing that Lupin was a werewolf as soon as she found out. Yes. But yeah, she acts in a very bigoted way as soon as, like you said, Jade, as soon as something else came up, well, now it's a problem that he's a werewolf. It right. wasn't all year, but right. now it's a problem. Right. So to help clear up the confusion, Lupin does what I would argue is a pretty smart thing. He gives Harry and Hermione their wands back and says, hey, you're armed. We're not. De-escalates the situation. Can we talk? Yeah. And smart. we get 
a lot of a lot of or we don't get a lot, but we get some backstory here. Lupin 100% confirms he is a werewolf. And he knows how to work the map because that's how he saw that all this was happening. He saw it on the map because he's one of the fucking authors. He By is, way, in fact, I Mooney. I fucking wrote it. I love that. Yeah, I know how it works. I'm Mooney. Now, I my question to you guys on this was all of this confusion has happened. We've established. Very confusing. Do you guys remember when you read it for the first time? I know, Jade, for you, that would have been when you were younger. Nate, not so, I mean, younger, technically is younger true, than but I you, am right now. you were not a kid reading this. I no. remember reading this as a kid. No, I, I never read this as a kid. I was and a grown ass adult. Loop, this was like so, because Lupin was one of my favorite teachers and characters in the book at this point. So did all of this happen? I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? I don't know how to feel as a child. <laughs> I know what I, I remember being mind blown and I remember pausing it, that spot in the chapter and going back through the beginning of the book. First of all, looking at any places that the Marauders Mac spoke oh, or said anything okay, and looking at it with new eyes, knowing that, you know, Lupin was the one saying one of those things and then, uh, and then just like scamming through. Scamming, scanning through uh, what he what he said, and just yeah. say, like looking at it real quick because I had time to do that back then. <laughs> so I was like, Ooh, <laughs> new piece of lore. Let's go back and look at it all now before I can continue I, forward. I think I had time to do that as well, but I didn't. <laughs> I I just I was just like I don't know what to think, and I usually my tactic in these scenarios is just keep reading. Like, well, I was going to be done after the chapter, not anymore. <laughs> Do you, I, I, like you said, I know you weren't young, young, but you were younger. Do you remember, like, was this a conflicting, because Lupin had to have been one of your favorite professors. That I, feels like a universal thing. Yeah, I liked Lupin a lot. I didn't peg that he was a werewolf uh, when the Boggart happened with the, oh, the yeah, disc. Oh, yeah, yeah. At that point, I still hadn't put two no, and two together, no. right? That was too early. Um, I started around the time when he started getting sick because it mentions the seasons. Uh, okay. And it mentions the moon a couple of times, and that's kind of when I started to put two and two together. But also, like, like I had mentioned, Dumbledore hired this guy. Yeah. He also hired Snape, which we nobody fucking likes Snape, right? But he's there. And Dumbledore keeps hiring all these problematic supposedly people mm -hmm. because he sees the good in them. So I'm like, okay, if Snape is there, he's an asshole. hundred percent. It's gotta be a good guy. Right? <laughs> so if Lupin is here and he is a werewolf, yeah, still has to be like safe enough that Dumbledore was like, he can be around children and be okay. Mm -hmm. That makes it sound like something else. Not what I mean. <laughs> but, like, but you understand what I mean. He yeah. can be around people of any age. Yes. And be yeah. He's not Human. going to wolf out <laughs> yeah. and just start eating people. Yeah. Like yeah. that yeah. problem is under control. <laughs> so just because he's a werewolf yeah. didn't inherently make him evil. But it is like it's a, a Lyco. Uh, what is it? Lycanthropy? Lycanthropy, thank you. That's like a condition. And, you know, in other lores, it's treatable. Like, you got to chain him to the cage in the middle of the full moon or whatever. But, like, people are like, hey, this happens once every so often. It's very unfortunate, but it's handleable. Also really likes medium rare. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Big fan say, of rare. I will say it was interesting and probably very true. The way that... The kids react to the knowledge and well, even Hermione, the way that she flips on him, mm -hmm. he, yeah. he immediately becomes very tired and like, yep, yep. I'm a werewolf. Yep. Oh yeah. It's and the like, same thing he's had yeah, to do a hundred like, times. He's like, I, yep. I expected that. Like, yeah, we were all cool. You guys loved me. I loved you guys. You know, we, we had a great relationship. Now, you know, this thing about me. And now you are are using this thing against me, Hermione. Yeah, cool. This Judging is what I for it. this is exactly what I expected. But also in the same tone that he had done a hundred times before, as if he were still just a teacher, like he's still the same guy. Yeah. And he's like, "Hey, Hermione, one out of three. I'm a little disappointed in you, actually. You know what? Yeah, you nailed that I'm a werewolf, but you missed all this other shit. Kind of pointing to the fact that you were so focused on the fact that I was a werewolf 
you missed it, Hermione, yeah. when normally you're the one to catch these details. And, and hey, Lupin's a detail guy. Because as oh, he's explaining much. all of this backstory, he keeps saying that like he saw Sirius drag two people into the tunnel and what he knew was going to go to the Shrieking Shack. And they finally, you know, Harry finally picks up on it and is just like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he then finally says the thing we've all been saying. We need to focus on the rat. <laughs> because... <laughs> That is no rat. That is, in fact, Peter Pettigrew. That, my guy, is a guy. And he is an animagus. That's right. Animagi. Animagus. I think Animag- it's animagus. Animanopia. He's animagus animagus. one of those. And I know, like, kind of talking about, like, the whole twist with Lupin, I know for a fact the first time I read this book definitely didn't stop there at the end of the chapter. I kept reading. Oh, yeah. You, you don't have get to, to do a giant cliffhanger like that and then put the book away for 15 hours. Nope, you keep reading. But that is that's the end of the chapter is Lupin saying there is another human being here. Yeah, hey, by the way, Ron, your pet rat is not a pet rat. Full grown man. That is in fact a man. <laughs> yeah. I never had this pegged at all. Oh no. Definitely well, not. Well, it explains. I mean, that's why it explains Listen, after. Th- well, I'm just saying. Lupin opened the map. He saw Harry, Ron, yes. and Hermione walk down there. He saw Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Peter Pettigrew walk out. And that's when he went like, oh, shit, they're serious black, and like took off. This is also why, you know, Harry hasn't seen this because Lupin took the map. And prior to that, Scabbers has been like, Took on like hiding and doing weird shit, right? So he hasn't seen him like hanging out on Rod's bed. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it explains why Lupin came in all hot, like, "Oh my God, Peter Pettigrew is here! I'm gonna take away all the wands." Yeah. I, but it doesn't explain why he doesn't come in and be like, "I saw Peter Pettigrew on the fucking <laughs> map." Yeah, just say that first. Or why he didn't bring the map? Yes. And be like, "Look, look, <laughs> look." Now I do believe they're the, not on the map. The shrieking anymore. check is that, they're but, not on the map anymore. But hey, hey, hey! Look, I have the map with me. Can we just look? What do you want me to do? I'll I'll body bind. I'll right. I'll, I'll Petrificus Totalis, Sirius Black, Sirius. I'm gonna do this to you. Can we just go down the tunnel a little bit to where we're on the map? Yeah, and you'll see that there's another name. But to your point, Jade, it does say that. He was watching them go down to the ma- or down to Hagrid's hut, and he doesn't mention seeing Pettigrew there. It's only he only mentions seeing Pettigrew. Then it's weird after they leave Hagrid's hut, yes. and then because Sirius interrupts, he takes off without grabbing anything. Right. So it feels like there's some weird shenanigans happening. Well, but, wait, did did uh, they have Scabbers with them on the way to? Oh fuck Hagrid's no, they found hut. him in no, Hagrid's they hut. They found him in right. Hagrid's hut. They but, didn't right, have him but, he with. Didn't, but he didn't see Hagrid's, Peter in Hagrid's hut. And Hagrid's hut is on the map, or yes. it should be. Mm, yes. He wasn't watching Hagrid's hut. Maybe that's what it was. When they got there, then they saw them he wasn't together. Paying attention. He happened yeah. to look away as they. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, There's, could a, be lot There's well, a lot look, of people on the map. There's a lot of people on the map. We yeah, and we do get more information in the following chapter. So I think instead of sitting here speculating and trying to figure out what's going on, but I like to. Oh, I think we're going to do more of it off air. (laughs) And then we'll do more of it on air in the next chapter. But I think for today, this is just about everything we can say about it. That's right. If you would like to let us know what you thought about this episode or this chapter, you can send an owl to podcastatt at gmail.com or follow us on any of our social means. If you really enjoyed this episode and wanted to support this show, you can go to patreon.com slash podcast ATT and pledge to a tier of any amount. We've got a lot of stuff there. It's a lot of fun. We hope to see you there real soon. It was great. It is great. Yeah, I like it a lot. (laughs) Thank you all very much for listening, and we'll see you real soon. Bye bye. We'll see you soon. Toodaloo. You bye. By the way, shit. I'm an animagus. Ah. No, you're not. <laughs> I just, I 
I wish, I like... wish there was a camera in the room because I love the fact that the, the information is I, behind the scenes moment for everyone. <laughs> information on the screen in front of all of us. Yeah, we can all so, read that very clearly. <laughs> Aaron was just like, hey, Nate, you said 8.5%. And I understand. I shouldn't have said this to everyone. But to me, it's hilarious. And I wish everyone was here for Back it. Back in my day, you kept kayfabe alive. You don't give them behind the scenes. Oh, my God. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> that you could have just pretended you remembered. 